Hi everybody, welcome to my video on price and quantity controls in a competitive market. Uh, I'm going to start this problem out giving you an inverse demand curve. Price equals 20 minus 1 fourth QP. And an inverse supply curve. Price equals 5 plus QS. And we're going to explore what happens when we implement a price ceiling at $15, a price floor at $18, or a quota at $8. So let's start with our ceiling. We can have, let's see, by the way, when we have these controls, we don't actually need the equilibrium just to figure out our shortage and surplus. We would need it potentially to calculate something like producer surplus or consumer surplus, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. Let's just graph our functions and we'll go from there. Supply curve starts at five. Demand curve starts at 20. Uh, Yep, and let's see, I guess it goes all the way down there to 80. So there's the setup. And our equilibrium, if you wanted to know, has a price of 17 and a quantity of 12. There you go. So there's sort of our starting lineup. But we don't need that information, so I'm not going to let it muddy our graph. So let's do our ceiling first. We fix price at 15. Oops, I just drew a floor. We fix price at 15, which is below our equilibrium. If you put a ceiling above equilibrium, it doesn't do anything, obviously, because price don't want to rise higher. And so if I just want to find the shortage or the surplus, well, in this case, let's figure it out. Shortage or surplus, let's look at quantity demanded. Uh, let's look at our inverse demand curve. Price is 15 equals 20 minus 1 fourth QD. So that's 1 fourth QD equals 5. QD equals 20. Same thing for supply quantity supplied. Uh, 15 equals 5 plus QS. QS equals 10. And so we get quantity demanded is 20. Quantity supplied is 10. If quantity demanded is greater than quantity supplied. That means we have a shortage of the good. Prices are low enough that people want to buy more than consumers want to sell. In this case, the, sh the shortage specifically is 20 minus 10 is 10 units. And so that shows up right along here, the, the gap between the 10 and the 20 is your shortage. Or some people like to highlight it right there on the graph. It doesn't really matter. They're both the same thing. Uh, now, if I were interested, and or maybe you are, and you were like, hey, what's the consumer producer surplus? I'm not going to show it to you. I'm not going to calculate it, at least. But consumer surplus would be everything in this area. Producer surplus would be everything in that area. And you might be wondering, like, hey, what about this dark shaded area? Well, just because we want to buy 20 units of a good doesn't mean you're going to sell 20 units of a good. Surplus only happens for transactions that actually exist. Suppliers only supply 10 units of the good. Those extra transactions, those extra two, because equilibrium was 12, those extra transactions just didn't even happen. So, yeah, that's just in case you were interested. Consumer surplus, producer surplus, deadweight loss. We'll have other videos where we calculate that. For now, highlighting is good enough. All right, price floor. Price, quantity, 80, 20, oh, supply, demand. We are now fixing, not floop, we are now fixing 
price at 18. So price is now stuck above equilibrium. What is the shortage or surplus? Well, right away we can already tell the quantity supplied is greater than the quantity demanded. And so that means right away we're not going to have a shortage, but a surplus, which is given by the gap between those. Quantity supplied greater than quantity demanded implies surplus. Let's figure out how big this surplus is. Quantity supplied is P, which is 18, minus 5 is 13. Quantity demanded is equal to 80 minus 4 times P, which is 80 minus 72 is just 8. So we have a surplus of 13 minus 8 is a 5 unit surplus. And this just comes from the fact that at the high price, suppliers are willing to sell us a lot, but buyers aren't willing to buy a whole lot. Uh, once again, let's give another precursor to if you were interested in calculating consumer and producer surplus. Your consumer surplus would be everything above your price floor below the demand curve. Your producer surplus would be everything below the demand, below the price and above your supply curve. And your deadweight loss would be all that stuff. Uh, let's see. Again, I should probably label those. Consumer surplus, producer surplus, deadweight loss. And you can calculate those areas on your own time. Lastly, let's do a price Let's do a quantity control, we'll call it a quota, where we are fixing the quantity at 8. Let's get our graph going. Instead of doing a price control, where we fix price somewhere, now we're doing that quantity control where we fix it like this. And so that, instead of driving a wedge between the quantities people want, it drives a wedge between the prices people are willing to pay for what's going on. We're going to be interested in a demand price and a supply price. The price that demanders are willing to pay for 8 units of the good is equal to uh, 20 minus 1 fourth times the Q, which is 8 which is 20 minus 2, which is just 18. The price that suppliers are willing to pay is equal to 5 plus Q, which is 5 plus 8, which is 13. Now you'll notice this graph looks a lot like this graph. Uh, except that we filled in that extra price that would be here for 13. All right, so uh, quotas can wind up looking a lot like price floors. Uh, if I choose a quota of 8, that will give me the same market outcome as a price floor of 18. Uh, they're going to have the exact same consumer surplus. Oops. It. The exact same consumer surplus, which is all this stuff. Wait, nope, nope, nope. Sorry, I got ahead of myself. The, the price we're charging is probably $18. Because if there's only eight units of the good, sellers aren't going to sell at cost. They'll let consumers bid each other up. And so it's going to look like that one with consumer surplus above 18 and below the demand curve. Producer surplus is going to look like this, and deadweight loss will look like that. So, a couple of key takeaways here. Whenever we meddle with a functioning competitive market, we're going to create a shortage or a surplus. We're going to create a deadweight loss. So, if 
we as a society decide it's worth it to meddle in a market, uh, hopefully we are taking into account that there are costs, that there are transactions lost, surplus lost, and inefficiencies in the market. Hopefully our benefits outweigh these costs. That's about it for this video. Hope it was useful. If not, too bad. Thanks for watching.